Chapter 2, Developing a Research Study And our subject, LASP 114 Hello! I am Jeremy C. Mahosai from Bachelor of Library and Information Science 3A In planning for research, we always ask ourselves Where do I begin or where does the planning begin? As Orman stated that by asking the questions, we strike the first spark igniting the chain reaction that leads to the research process. An inquisite mind is the beginning of research. The purpose of basic research is to discover new knowledge. New knowledge has been sought either by means of deductive logic or through the use of inductive reasoning. The inductive reasoning this proceeds from particular instances to general principles or from fact theories. On the other hand, the deductive logic or systematic logic is developed by Aristotle and it is characterized by use of syllogism. Syllogism is a type of logical argument that is usually brief in form. It aims at identifying the general truth in a particular situation. Babi has pointed out with the deductive method we would have reason towards observation and with indicative method we would have reason from observation. Research is also this what we call scientific method of inquiry. The inductive reasoning contributed to the development of what is known as the scientific method or the scientific method of inquiry. This approach to the discovery of knowledge which arose during the Renaissance gained major supports in the 16th century. Throughout this process, but perhaps particularly at this point, the librarian will need to develop a plan for attempting to resolve the problem. In other words, it will be necessary to decide what methodology and data collections, techniques, among other procedures to utilize in the investigation. Lidi and Ormura develop a diagram to illustrate the circular nature of research. As they state, every researcher soon learns that genuine research yields as many problems as it resolves, such as in the nature of the discovery of knowledge. This is the cyclical process in research. Number one, research begins with problem. Research defines the goal. Research subsidizes the problem. Research possesses tentative solutions to the problem. Research looks for data. And the last one, research interprets the meaning of the data. There is also a general criteria for basic research. In addition to adhering to a general outline, basic research study generally should meet certain criteria to qualify as basic or field research. Number one is the university, which means that the study should be researchable by any other qualified investigator. Number two is the replication, which is related to the criterion of university. It means that research study is repeatable. Number three is the control, which relates to the parameters of research. Say the criterion is important for isolating the critical factors and facilitating replication. And the number four is the measurement, which constitutes the observation and recording of the phenomena. Now let's go to the identification of the problem. As Einstein and Einfield have been quoted that saying, the formulation of problem is often more essential than its solution. Or as Lady and Armroad stated, the heart of every research project is the problem. It is the paramount of importance to the success of the research effort. To see problem with unwavering clarity and to state it in precise and unmistakable terms is the first requirements of the research process. When it comes to research, one's belief system takes on greater significance because it provides the domain assumptions upon which the work and knowledge of the research are based. There is the characteristic of a problem suitable for basic research. The problem should represent conceptual thinking, inquiry, and insight, not merely activity. There are also several more practical considerations that the researcher should make before settling on a specific problem. Among this is the researcher's interest in the problem. The statement of the problem, having identified a suitable problem 
for research, the next logical step is to write a statement of it for future reference. Perhaps, it goes without saying but the problem should be written in complete grammatical sentence, not in mere phrases. And in identifying sub-problems, virtually all problems contain components or sub-problems, which should be appropriate for study, if not solution. Sub-problems can facilitate resolving a large problem piecemeal, as they are often more manageable for or researchable than the general problem can be investigated separately. The role of method theory in the design of research. Before taking up assumptions and hypotheses, we should consider the role of theory in the design of research study. But before discussing the theory and the term, method theory should be considered briefly although it does not appear in LISP literature. The method theory can be seen as the philosophy behind the theory, the fundamental set of ideas about how phenomena of interest in particular field should be thought about and researched. Definition of theory Having determined the rule and value of theory in research, it should be relatively easy to define. Babi defines theory as a systematic explanation for the observation that relate to a particular aspect of life. It also has been defined as something which interrelates a set or sets of variables on the basis of the rule of logic. The formation of theories. Suitable theories do not always exist for the researcher in need of one. In many cases, they must be developed or built. Golder defines theory building as the accumulation of empirical findings and the development of a system intermeshing hypothesis concerning their relationship. Molly states that good theory should meet the following criteria. Number one, a theory or a theoretical system should permit deductions that can be tested empirically. In other words, it should be provide the means for its own testing. Number two, a theory should be compatible with both observation and previously verified theories. It must be well-grounded and should be able to explain the phenomena under the study. 3. A theory should be stated as simply as possible. It should explain adequately the existing knowledge but should not be any more complex than necessary. This characteristic represents the so-called law of parsimony. In testing the theory, Having developed or at least identified a suitable theory, the next requisite step is to test it. Much of the rest of this text will directly or indirectly concern itself from the testing procedures. Formulating Hypothesis Definitions of Hypothesis The second major step in the standard scientific method of inquiry is the formulation of one or more theoretical hypothesis. A variety of definitions of hypothesis found in the literature reflect slightly different perspectives or emphasis. Bobby defines the hypothesis as a specified testable expectation about empirical reality that follows from a more general position. There are several types of hypothesis including the following. Number one, working or research hypothesis. This is the hypothesis with which research study begins. It should help to delimit and guide the study. Two, the final hypothesis. The hypothesis that reflects the finding of the research study. Number three is the particular hypothesis. Hypothesis which merely explains a scientific fact or situation. Four, casual hypothesis. A hypothesis which states that there is a casual relationship between two or more variables. Number five, alternative hypothesis. It is a rival hypothesis which provides another possible and plausible solution to the problem. Six, null hypothesis. A hypothesis which asserts that there is no real relation between or among variables in question. Number seven, inductive hypothesis. This hypothesis which moves from the particular to the general or a generalization based on observation. 8. Deductive Hypothesis 
This hypothesis, which shifts from the general to the particular, or a hypothesis derived from the theory. 9. Non-directional hypothesis. A hypothesis which merely indicates that a relationship or differences exist. The directional hypothesis is a hypothesis which indicates the nature of the relationship between or among variables. 11. Multivariate hypothesis. This hypothesis is proposing a relationship among more than two phenomena or variables. 12 is the bivariate hypothesis. This hypothesis is proposing a relationship between two phenomena or variables. The last one is the univariate hypothesis. This hypothesis is concerned with only one phenomenon or variable. There is also a source of hypothesis. One of the most convenient and logical sources of hypothesis is a theory, since it can be considered to be a broad hypothesis or a set of sub-hypotheses. The formulation of a hypothesis ideally begins with a consideration of a theory, and more specifically, one or more components of a theory. But at the very least, this process starts with a set of specific facts or observation which the researchers attempts to explain variables. A variable may be thought as any property of a person, thing, event, setting, and so on that is not fixed. Variables or factors can be perceived or labeled in a variety of ways depending on the nature of the relationship between or among them. Now let's go to the concept. A researcher in order to organize his or her data so as to perceive relationships among variables must first make use of concepts. A concept may be defined as abstraction from observed events or a shorthand representation of a variety of facts. Its purpose is to simplify thinking by subsumming a number of events under a one general heading. Former may be considered formal or conceptual definitions. The latter are referred to as working or operational definition. In developing both conceptual and working definitions, one should avoid the so-called spurious definitions. These are circular definitions which tend to define terms using the same terms. These higher-level concepts often referred to as constructs generally represent such phenomena as attitudes, perceptions, roles, and so on. There are also desirable characteristics of hypothesis. An ideal hypothesis should possess several other characteristics including the following. 1. Generalizability or universality. 2. Compatibility with existing knowledge. 3. Testability. 4. Invariability. 5. Casuality. Testing the hypothesis. In testing the validity of hypothesis, the researcher typically employs the deductive method in that he or she begins with a theoretical framework, formulates a hypothesis, and logically deduces what the results of the test should be if the hypothesis is correct. This is usually accomplished in two stages. First, the researcher deductively develops certain logical implications also known as logical consequences and criteria, which when stated in operational terms, can help to reject or support the hypothesis. The second basic step in testing hypothesis involves actually subjecting to a trial by collecting and analyzing relevant data. Now let's have the validity and reliability. Validity and reliability are actually requirements for both the design and the measurement of research. The validity of research design is multifaceted word or concept. There are at least three types of validity as it relates to the design of research. The internal validity, construct validity, and the external validity. Validity and measurement. The extent to which an instrument measure what is designed to measure indicates the level of validity of that measure. Data collection instrument may be in a high reliability and low validity or vice versa. Logical validity. This is a type of validity generally based on expert judgment. It includes content validity and face validity. Content validity represents the degree to which an instrument measures a specific content area, while face validity is similar to content validity and the terms are sometimes used interchangeably. Empirical validity is in contrast to logical validity. Empirical validity is based on external objective criteria. 
1. Concurrent validity indicates the degree to which the scores in a test or other data collection instrument. 2. Predictive validity has to do with the degree to which an instrument can identify the differences that will evidence themselves in the future. Construct validity. This validity is usually known as construct validity. The definition for construct validity sounds like the definition for phase validity, in that construct validity represents the extent to which an instrument measures the concept for construct that is intended to measure. The reliability of research design. If the design of research study is reliable, then its findings should be repeatable or replicable and generalizable beyond the study. Reliability and measurement. A measurement is generally considered to be reliable when the error component is reasonably small and does not fluctuate greatly from one observation to another. Thus, reliability can be defined as the degree to which an instrument accurately and consistently measures whatever it measures. Validity is measured with following formula. Scales. The level of discrimination in large part a function of the measurement scale used by the research instrument. The American Heritage Dictionary defines scales as a progressive classification as of size, amount, importance, or rank, a relative level or degree. There are generally considered to be four types of measurement scales. First is the nominal scale. The nominal or categorical scale consists of two or more named categories. Second, the ordinal scale. An ordinal scale defines the relative positions of objects or individuals. Third is the interval scale. This scale provides a ranking of position. Fourth is the ratio scale. This scale is comparable to the interval scale. A research project is not likely to succeed unless careful attention has been paid of these steps. Would-be researchers should realize that the time that goes into the conceptual development and planning for a research study is a time well spent, and it will result in fewer problems in the later stages of research. And that was all for today. Thank you very much.